good morning. Long time no see. About three weeks to be exact. Been a long time. It's April 27th, Saturday morning here, a little after 8 o'clock. We haven't flown in three weeks since we took Joe up. Between crappy weather and me being sick, it just didn't happen, so I've been waiting for this for a long time. We've got a hell of a mission today. Winds look good. We're going to go try to go to Metamora. We'll see how they are when we get up, but it's about a 39, 40 mile one way trip. So we're going to go over there. Winds permitting, of course. Let's see how it looks. Let's check our winds here on the ground. Zero three. Visibility Miss that. One, zero. Sky condition broken one zero thousand. Temperature zero niner Celsius. Dew point zero two Celsius. Clear for up. Altimeter two niner, niner up. six. Remarks. Density altitude three hundred. Shelbyville Municipal Airport, Shelbyville, Indiana. Automated weather observation one two zero one Zulu. Wind two eight zero at zero three. I'll take that. Get my little pad on here, right? So this thing will stay. That's obnoxious again, isn't it? I had to deal with that in a while. Steering lines are clear. 
Altimeter set, 810 feet, seat belts on and secure. Method in the pattern. All right, give this thing about eight more degrees and then we'll go. Should be a good one. Shelbyville traffic, experimental power parachute 729 or Mike Papa departing runway 27 will be exiting the area to the east after departure of Shelbyville.
check here. restrictions to make sure that we can even fly because yesterday we had President Trump in town and they need to speak to the NRA convention and there's a 30 nautical mile radius temporary flight restriction where you can't fly from centered on Indianapolis which included Shelbyville so I'll put pictures of that up so you got to check that kind of stuff before you can even think about going anywhere because if the weather's not good so there's a TF, TFR, you can't even do anything, so don't even go any further. Once that's set up, then we kind of figure out where we're going to go and what we're going to shoot. And then after that comes the flight planning. So usually I'll have a theme, or try to, for a flight like this flight. We're going to Metamora, where my grandmother was born. Kind of a neat little town. And I um, wanted to get some pictures of that. So. The next step then is to do all the flight planning around that, figuring out the distance, your course, uh, how long it's going to take, how much fuel you're going to burn, and your navigation, you know, your route, so you can kind of do checkpoints to see where you're at. And <coughs> that's an involved process, and I use a program called ForeFlight, so you don't have to do it by hand, so I lay out a flight plan on the map on my iPad. And then I have all the parameters for my aircraft in there, my fuel burn rate, my performance, my true air speed, and then it'll calculate my ground speed, my fuel burn, uh, my time in route, the time and distance between points on the route, just to make sure that it's feasible, that I got enough fuel and I leave enough reserve for when I come back to land. Not sure where I'm at here. And then once we're going, we do the flight, we get up to our destination, and then we're looking out for other airplanes. So first, before I do anything, I'll clear the airspace, and we'll do that kind of constantly. And then we'll start shooting. And uh, the camera I use is a Canon 1D Mark IV. I've had this for about eight years now. It's a pro body, one of their old, it's about three generations back. Um, built like a tank, it's fast, it's rugged, the batteries last forever. Shoots about 10 frames per second, it's a 16 megapixel. And then for lens, I've been using the 100 to 400, the Canon 100 to 400 Mark II zoom, which I bought about a year ago. I used to use, and sometimes I do, a 70 to 200 f2.8, but I like a little more reach. I like to zoom tight down on the ground. I don't want wide angle shots in the air. <coughs> and I use image, full image stabilization when I'm on there, because you can see we're walking around up here, big time. So, um, also when I'm shooting, I'll shoot uh, shutter priority on the camera. Mostly I shoot, I used to shoot manual. And normal everyday stuff, I'll shoot manual. Back when I shot in sports for the paper, I shot manual all the time. But uh, in the air, it's kind of a pain. It's hard to see through the viewfinder. I gotta pop this visor up and my eyes water and it's kind of hard to see and it takes too much time to set both the aperture and the shutter speed. So I just set the shutter speed to at least a thousandth. I prefer a 1250th or faster just to make sure I don't get any motion blur. And I let the camera set the aperture of the lens. The only thing I really have to watch out for is um, that 
the ISO was set high enough that uh, I've got enough aperture. If it's too low and I can't, the aperture doesn't get wide enough, then I'm going to have underexposure. So usually I'll set the ISO plenty high um, to make sure i got enough room in case, you know, the lens, you know, it's kind of dark down at the target. I think we've got a cover bridge over here we shot before. So, <coughs> I mean, that's 244 over there. And then we'll shoot, and then we'll look for aircraft, and we'll shoot different angles, we'll do different, to get different lighting, do different altitudes to get the perspective. And then, also at the same time I'm shooting video, I use two GoPros, uh, Hero 4 Silvers, mounted up with the audio input from my intercom here, as you can hear, to help kind of narrate. And uh, once we get back, there's a ton of data, so like from a flight, if I do a two and a half hour flight, I could have, you know, upwards of, I don't know, 120 gig of video and another 40 to 50 gig of pictures. So I had one flight ride at 170 gig of data. So I'll go through disk space like crazy. And then when I import the pictures from the card, um, I, I actually geotag those. So I have the app I use called MotionX GPS, which is tracking our flight. And I have the time, my camera time set correctly, and then I can sync up inside the Lightroom when I import the pictures into Lightroom. I can load that track log, and it'll actually uh, tag each picture with the lat log where I took it, which is very handy to go back when I'm looking for pictures later on. I can do it by map instead of digging through. And then I'll go through and I'll pick out all the pictures. I'll do my selects, give them stars, and then the ones that are good, I'll go ahead and post-process all crop and change the light levels and so on and so forth. Flat Rock River's up pretty good here. And then we'll export them out to JPEG and post them to the blog. For uh, video editing, I used to use a Adobe Premiere Pro CS6, and I dumped that uh, to uh, just switch to a software called uh, DaVinci Resolve, and I've been using version 15. I just upgraded to uh, 16 beta, and I think I'm going to get, I've been using the free version, I'm going to get the studio version for 300 bucks. I find that a lot easier to do my photo editing. we got Milroy dead ahead about three miles. That's pretty good, Milroy in about half an hour or less. We're flying. And then I'll take uh, <coughs> the both camera files, and I'll create a multi-camera clip. And then inside of Resolve, I can switch back and forth, and I can cut back and forth between them quickly. Uh, cut out sections I don't want, add titles, I add subtitles for locations, and so on and so forth. And then export that, throw it up on YouTube. So that's kind of a quick synopsis of what I do. Man, we are hauling butt here. Whew. Coming down over Amish country now. Might be seeing some buggies before too long. Feet up. Let's do a ground speed check here. I just don't want to have a monster headwind on the way back. That's my deal. Doing 36. 36 and a half. So we don't have too much of a tailwind. Didn't want too much of one.
terrain's going to get funky. We got hills and lots of trees over there, so it's going to be interesting.
anchor down here and pay attention to flying now. Got our picture of Andersonville. One more picture of the church head on here. Got it. All right, here we go over trees. Let's get some more altitude here. out here. Wow.
that's Metamore up there then. It's got to be it, around that hill. Follow the river and we can't go wrong. Brown River. A lot of rain.
Ты
Godspeed. Doing alright. Good job, Jason. Alright,
two here to Rushville. There is Rushville. We made it to Metamore, now all I gotta do is make it home.
So we're coming up over State Road 3 right now. Looks like we're about, I don't know, three miles south of Rushville. 2,700 feet MSL. We're climbing because I want to. like that. Best 
second ever hole for was calm winds, but having a tailwind both ways, that's nice. We're making good time. Turn you around here so you can see Homer. We got lots of pictures of Homer, but hey, what's a few more? And there's Vanilla. Vanilla, Vanilla. Vanilla, Vanilla. Lip seekers, front. different towns quite a long ways away. Vanilla, vanilla.
plane that just landed up there. Traffic series 44 Victor coming right over the 56th Street Bridge. Entering the left downwind for runway 3 Eagle Creek. Chevrolet traffic, car pressure 9 on my top on a short final for runway 9 or Chevrolet.
Check the parachute. Niner Mike Papa has the parachute packed up and clear of runway Niner Shepard. Ah, damn, what the hell? Bye.